safe passage pilgrim of the spirit peace be with you on your way back home you're in my heart as we travel near it safe journey now your work is done. Pilgrim of the Spirit. Hi, I'm Barbara Andino Stevenson, and I'm a clay artist, and my studio is at Artworks Downtown in San Rafael and I've been doing ceramics for most of my adult life. And next door to me in Artworks Downtown is my collaborator, Phyllis Thalen. And I've also been an artist most of my life, but I find that I often get distracted with being an organizer of the arts instead of being an artist. And thanks to Barbara, I'm now encouraged to spend more of my time as an artist. This is almost like a coming out party for me in this collaboration. I did found Artworks downtown. It's been open now for 12 years and I'm hoping that it's going to be able to make it on its own because I'm on with being an artist and I'm delighted about that. So the way that we started was um, I was doing this ceramic work that has lots and lots of texture. And Phyllis brought into my studio the work that she's been working on, which has to do with natural fibers. And um, we'll show you some of those in a little while. But the fiber that really spoke to me was mulberry. And it felt like a natural progression to let clay, which is the earth, and mulberry, which is a plant, to go right out of the earth. And I looked up mulberry in um, a metaphysical book, and it said mulberry bark was a substance that was used for protection. So that sort of added a little fuel to my fire. It seemed to go well together. I think I realized two or three years ago that Barbara, across the way from my studio, was particularly interested in what I was doing at that time, making imaginary sanctuaries out of found materials. In fact, she bought one, which just amazed me. And we realized that we had a kind of common attitude about natural fibers, natural materials, and how they took us in the process of making them into a, a realm, which we have concluded is basically a realm of dreams in the sense that it's almost like daydreaming as you work with the material. It kind of tells you what it wants to be. And before we knew it, we were exchanging ideas, and I had been using mulberry bark, and uh, Barbara said, I would really like to see how you do that, or what you do, and I, showed her, we'll show you later, uh, what mulberry bark looks like. You have to cook it and make it soft and pliable, and then you can stretch it and it becomes like lace and looks very delicate, but when it dries, it's like bark. So it's a very sturdy art material. Well, I really liked it because it had a couple of elements that were really intriguing to me. One, on one end of it, it looked really lacy and very precious, and on the other end, it looked like muck. You know, like things that were decaying. And I, I like the idea of, in a piece of art, to have those things that are playing against each other. And when Phyllis told me where to get the mulberry bark, I went over to the man who was selling it, and I said, I'd like to have some mulberry bark. And he said, how much would you want? And I said, I don't know, because I didn't know how to buy mulberry bark or what you did with it. And he said, do you know what you're doing? And I said, um, not exactly. <laughs> and so I said, I um, just want to play with it. So he gave me a little history about mulberry bark being used for paper making. Right. right. So then we started experimenting. I got involved with mulberry bark because I wanted to learn how to make paper, handmade paper. And I took a class and discovered that you had to pound this cooked mulberry bark at least a half an hour oh to get it into fibers that are used in paper. They're floated in a solution and made into paper. And I decided my uh, rotator cuff's not going to do that. So I stretched it out over a rock that was in the garden and realized that when it dried, it held the form. 
So I'm interested in mulberry bark in the way that it can create a very solid but delicate looking object. So I guess we fell into it right. <laughs> and it works so well for us, especially together. The fun part of our collaboration was that um, one day, for who knows what reason, I was in the studio and I had a piece, this piece right here, and um, Phyllis was out of town and uh, she leaves her studio open. So I thought I would just see what would happen if I let the mulberry bark grow out of my piece and I went in and stole one of her boats and <laughs> that one in there. And I liked it so much I glued it in. I had the nerve to glue it in. So I got on the phone right away and said, Phyllis, um, we have a new collaboration. I have stolen a boat and if you like it, that's terrific. If you don't like it, I'll pay for the boat. <laughs> and she came into the studio and left it, and we just kept going from there. She kept stealing the boats out of my <laughs> studio.